Today we are going to learn the parts of a computer. Now we use computers all the time. Every day you can find out is how they work. And so I'll be taking you through uh, the different parts, how they work and work together. And then uh, you'll use this information to basically uh, create a replica of a computer. So you'll better understand how it works. Uh, let's start with the power button. Okay, and these are a couple of projects that my uh, past students already turned in. Okay, this one's Christine's, uh, really nice plastic uh, casing. But basically, when you hit the power button here, okay, and this uh, computer, if I plugged it in, it would actually work. She uh, disassembled it, assembled it. But if I push this power button, what happens is, okay, uh, this wire, okay, it sends a signal to the motherboard, okay? And the motherboard sends that signal to the power supply, and the power supply will send the signal to um, the power um, and say, hey, give me power, I'm ready for it. So you're, like, if you plug into the wall, it'll send energy to the power supply, and then the power supply will give power to your computer, okay? And it gives power to the computer through these power cords. So notice the power cords. And, uh, this is a um, computer. So notice you plug the power supply or the power cord here, and uh, you plug these wire these wires into different the different parts that you need uh, power to. For example, when if you have a uh, DVD-ROM, okay, and you hit the power button or the eject button to open the tray, I mean, how is that going to open? It, it needs power. And that's why we would take one of the power uh, strips and plug that in to our DVD. So everything that needs uh, power, we need to make sure that one of these is connected. And notice they're in sets, okay? So, um, so make sure both sets, there's uh, are plugged in to the um, appropriate uh, part that needs the power. Now, I, I start with the power supply because it's very important. Personally, I think it's the most computer because without power, currently, we don't have a computer. Maybe in the future, we don't need power. Uh, but also, it's important to keep your power supply cool, okay? Because it gives off a lot of heat. Actually, I've heard that a uh, computer gives off twice the amount of body heat as a person. So we have a fan built into our power supply that keeps it cool. And so if the power supply goes bad or um, if it gets really, really hot, then it's gonna, you know, it could, like, st I've seen these, ha like, start fires in your computer and destroy them. So you want to make sure that's really cool. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, power supply, we'll go here, here, and uh, the hard disk. Let me talk about the hard disk, because that's another thing the power supply gives power to. Um, the hard disk, okay, looks like this. And it basically stores permanent data on your computer. So when you, let's say, open up a Microsoft Word document, you go to File, Save As, Save As, uh, term paper, save to the desktop. Imagine a CD, okay, what, mm, what a hard drive looks on the, like, look, mm, what a, basically it looks like a CD, but it's really thick, okay, and so picture a CD in here, and then picture, you know, like the old record players, they have this little needle, and this needle will write the data onto the hard drive. Okay, so remember if you said, hey, save this file, it's going to um, go and find empty space on your data disk and then save it there. And then have you heard of defragment your hard drive? Um, that's something that you should be doing. I've heard about once a month, not too much because you don't want to wear out that needle. But about once a month, you should defragment your hard drive, which means basically when it saves the data, it just saves it scattered. And when you defragment your hard drive, it basically organizes it. Kind of like cleaning your room and putting your clothes into the drawers that they belong to so it's, you can fit more stuff in your room. So hard drive is important to save your date, permanent data on your, uh, in your computer. And this is what it looks on the back, and this is the front. And again, there's a slot there for the power. 
Now, uh, this ranges from using gigabytes. Uh, so, uh, and also there's terabytes, which is 1,000 gigabytes. So you can get the amount of uh, size that you need. But I have a question though: How does it know how to write the data? Like we have a power cord on here, but how does it write the data to the um, hard drive? Well, actually, um, that is what these are for. Okay, and this is called an ADE. Okay, ADE strips, and they actually we call them seat belts because they look like seat belts. But you basically uh, plug in the ADE strip to the uh, hard drive, and then you put the other part into the ADE connector um, on your motherboard, okay? And so this allows data to be transferred from the motherboard uh, to your hard drive, the information to be saved. Now you may be like, why the motherboard? I keep hearing this motherboard, but what's the big deal about a motherboard? Well, the motherboard is important, just like, you know, like your mom, she's important, right? So without your motherboard, you wouldn't have a nice computer. I think of the motherboard as like the heart of the computer, okay? Because the heart is like the living and breathing parts of it. Now let's go over the parts of the motherboard. And as you see, it's connected right there. And first of all, um, on the motherboard, we have our ADE connectors. And so you just plug those in right here, and then you plug in the other side to like your hard disk. Now, other things that they can be plugged into uh, for data, yeah, your uh, CD, DVD, ROM drive, that needs data to be transferred back and forth. So that's included. So you want to make sure that those uh, ADD tapes are connected to that. So basically, um, the most important part on the motherboard is your processor. And now the processor is like the brain of the computer. It's the one that thinks. And it thinks a lot. It thinks really hard. And because it thinks so hard, it needs uh, its own little fan to cool it off so it doesn't overheat, kind of like our power supply. So right now we can't see our processor because it's underneath here. But it basically looks like a small chip. And you've heard of like Intel, uh, AMD. Those are uh, chips um, for our processor. Processor is really expensive. Like uh, that's one of the things that really... Uh, makes the price of computers go up or down based on the quality of your processor. So underneath this fan is a processor. Now the processor basically looks like this. And then your power strips are basically like your the blood lines, like making sure all the blood is and power is going to all parts of the computer. I consider the ADE strips kind of like your nervous system, you know, saying the nerves and so if you put your hand on a hot, hot stove, it's going to send nerves to your brain. Hey, don't touch that. Same thing with this, with the processor. Uh, it's going to uh, use the AD cables to send information uh, about different things. So that's that. Uh, we talked about uh, the hard disk or hard drive and how it uh, saves permanent data. But what about the temporary data? Uh, temporary data is actually saved on RAM. Okay, this is called RAM uh, cards. Okay, and now you may ask, okay, I've heard of RAM, and what does it do? Okay, so basically, if you think of my like a, a desk. Okay, let's say I work on I'm working on Microsoft Word document. Okay, and then I'm also working in Adobe Photoshop and creating some photography designs, and then I'm working on I have my internet uh, Firefox open, and I'm working on an email. Okay, so I have all these things open, and I'm working in, uh, let's say, uh, iMovie and making a video. So I have all these things open. Okay, now, first of all, uh, the browser, like the internet and Microsoft Word, those aren't too big of a program, so they probably don't take up much space or um, RAM. Okay, because everything that's open on your computer and running, it needs to be saved temporarily you know, to keep it running and going. So those things don't take as much RAM, but what takes more RAM is more like video and graphics.